Hey folks, welcome back. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit about the four-wheel drive system uh, that's in this 1997 Ford Explorer. This should pertain to something a lot newer. Um, I remember actually seeing a 2008 uh, Explorer being the exact same uh, type of setup. So let's get into it. So what we're dealing with is this... Uh, Got the three settings on here, auto, 4x4 high, and 4x4 low. Um, that's just how it's set up. I don't really care for it myself. Uh, if it were me, one, you know, driving one of these, I'd rather have a, you know, a, a too high setting and put it in four-wheel drive when I need it, but that's not the way they made this. And so um, with this car, what we're getting is it's wanting to, you know, be in four-wheel drive just on dry pavement. It's kind of doing a lot of binding and kind of making the transfer cases kind of making some uh, grumbling noises and stuff like that. Um, everything else uh, appears to be okay. Um, we've had it up in the air with all four tires moving. There's nothing going on as far as like axle noises or, you know, bad CV axles or anything like that it's it's all that's all good you want to make sure that that stuff is good um and that's not what's making your noise but obviously this should not be in dry pavement with this thing in auto this should not be um in four-wheel drive at all and you know we don't have any uh lights blinking sometimes if you have your your four by four light um i think they would turn them on the dash here right here There are those two right there. So four by four and four by four low. They come on when you turn, when you go to crank the engine started. So if you got those two lights, sometimes they'll blink. Um, that you might have a front sensor problem. Um, we don't have any of that kind of issues. It's just trying to lock itself into four wheel drive. Okay, I'm not quite an expert on these, but I, I, essentially the theory of operation when when these things work is there's some magnetic type clutches uh, inside the transfer case so that when it measures a difference between your rear wheels, because uh, it's driven with the rear wheels all the time, and then when it measures a, a, I don't know what the parameters are, but when it measures a um, difference in the front and, and or the rear speed versus the front, it starts engaging those clutches and it kind of has to do it gradually. And I mean, it would have to do that. It can't just like lock it in four wheel drive just like that um, or else you get a big old loud clunk just kind of like, you know, when you have a shift on the fly system. Um, in any pickup truck or whatever, especially Ford, you know, when while you're spinning, you should not engage into four wheel drive. Um, the 96s and 95s of these cars, which I've worked on quite a bit, um, that's how they work. They've got the, where it says two high, four by four high and four by four low, they just don't have the auto setting, but that's the way this auto system is supposed to work. And then if you're doing like these people use it for, as you can see, uh, a lot of stop and go type stuff. If you're needing four wheel drive, your system would a lot be better off. You just lock it in four wheel, four wheel high, and then it pretty much just locks those those magnetic clutches in place. That's how I kind of assume it works. I'm pretty sure. So basically, what we had going on with this is, um, and this, what you kind of need to do is, is you basically you could have a, an actual problem, but most likely it's probably just due to needing the fluid changed and there's a procedure that the that there's actually a a, a manufactured troubleshoot bulletin um, that came out you know years and years ago as far as as to actually what to actually do and how to actually service this transfer case and that's what I'm going to show you here okay here is the uh service bulletin that we're actually um, looking at right here. And this is exactly the binding or shutter, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, basically, it's it's the issue, the diagnostic procedure for binding or shutter from transfer cases in slow, tight turns while in 4x4 auto mode may be inaccurate on some vehicles. Um, you know, and it, it talks about all these different diagnostic procedures that you got to go to. And, you know, um, we kind of did all this kind of stuff, you know, that, um, you know, like it says here, you know, the vehicle should bind in turns in both 
four by four high and four by four low exactly because on dry pavement uh you know you're locking in four wheel drive you will have binding and all that issues going that's that's exactly what will happen but the four button but not in the four by four auto um you know it says the four by four this is what we just talked about so you know and our our deal was working our switch was working everything seemed like it was fine um and so you know it just kind of talks about there's different uh stuff here i can just kind of if you want to pause this or anything like that maybe you have a different uh code or something like that this deals with the uh um i have had this uh 1836 the uh, front prop shaft sensor on this particular vehicle uh that sensor actually lives on the back of the transfer case right underneath the uh actuator motor and really that actuator motor that's really all it does i believe is just turn it into uh, the low position it kind of does it everything else through the magnetic clutches so this is what we want to get into right here um as far as the service goes and this worked for this vehicle right here because it was doing a lot of binding and stuff like that um and you know this vehicle hadn't been driven for a while it was all tore apart when we got it um transmission wise and everything like that so um it did have these four-wheel drive issues and binding and all that kind of stuff not all the time but some of the time and then it got worse um so basically this, you know, it's talking about draining the old transfer case fluid and rep replacing with uh, 48 ounces of, of Motorcraft Mercron ATF fluid, basically. And then it talks about idle the vehicle and drive for five minutes on the hoist in 4x2 mode. Now when I did this, oh, let's just keep on going. Um, in 4x2 mode in the 1995 to 96 Explorers, those are the ones that have the, the two high, four high, um, and then with the transfer case shift motor disconnected in the 97, and this should work for, you know, 98, 99 and on, um, discontinuing the motor will simulate four by two mode and will cause differential speeds across the transfer case clutch plates. And this will ensure any water caught between the clutch plates gets purged out and then you'll drain it and then you'll do it again. I actually did this twice and got this system working uh perfectly and actually what i ended up having to do is even i had all four uh wheels you know obviously i don't have a lift right in in here um but i had all four wheels up off the ground well the fronts were spinning at the same speed as the other because it's technically those clutches are locked in um so basically what you really need to do is the, you need to have it opposite of way i have it now and just lift the rear wheels you need to unplug the, and I'll show you this all in just a second. Um, you need to unplug the uh, uh, transfer case actuator motor and have it in the auto setting, obviously on the dash, and your front wheels being on the ground, and then put the car in drive and just let it idle in drive, you know, five, 10 minutes, and then you'll drain the fluid and then you'll refill it and then you'll do the same process again and you'll drain the fluid and you might have to do that two three times uh the first bit of fluid that came out of this was really milky looking so it had a lot of water condensation you know in it for however it got in there it just did um but now this thing is working perfectly and let me let's crawl underneath there and have a look see at uh kind of what we're doing with some of this Okay, so we got our rear axle right there and you just come right up here to the back of the transfer case. This is your actuator motor and you'll wanna just unplug it right here. I've got it all kinda, the actual deal is broke. It's just zip tight here so it stays in place now that everything is all fixed. I had told you and I can't see, you know, can't film it right, you know, but there's this, the, your front speed sensor lives just right behind this. As soon as you move this thing, it's a speed sensor that's going to look similar to that one right there. This is for your rear, rear shaft speed sensor right there. That's what the computer uses between, uh, that speed sensor and this one right here. That's what it uses to determine whether or not it's going to start putting it in the four wheel drive. Um, so basically right now you've got your drain plug here, 
which is not in the most convenient location. You, it's probably best if you remove this plate. I just put some rags and stuff in here, but and then clean it all up afterwards. Because once it gets to a point where then it just starts dripping right back in here, um, then depending on how you park, it's maybe going to come out of this hole right here. Um, anyways, that's your drain plug right there, and then right up here is your fill plug right there and pretty it's going to take right around two quarts it said 48 ounces so but um it's it's close to two quarts but basically what you're going to do is you're obviously after you drain it you put this plug back in remove that plug and just fill it until it starts coming out of here and then just put that plug back in place put your front wheels on the ground and then uh have this unplugged and then just, like I said, idle the vehicle and, and do that for 5, 10, 15 minutes or whatever. And you will actually notice when the fluid comes out, even the second time, it'll be it'll be cleaner than it did the first time, obviously. But then uh, by the time you get to the third, maybe even the fourth time, I did it uh, twice. I said, you know, I drained it, drained it the first time, put new fluid in, did this test, drained it again, uh, looked better, a lot better. And then... Um, filled it back up and uh, did that test again with it idling in, in gear and then uh, drained it out and the fluid looked way better and then uh, went ahead and, and stopped there and just and just put brand new fluid in there and then um, took it out for a road test and it worked it's working great so just wanted to make this you know video about this particular deal because this could be what you got going on especially if it seems like your system is working um but basically if you're getting a you know where you're in four wheel drive uh when you're in the auto setting and you're on dry pavement you know your wheels aren't aren't slipping and it ain't supposed to be in automatic mode or i mean it ain't supposed to be in four by four so that's kind of what you might possibly have going on so um like I said, I might not be perfect on exactly how this system works, but it's got to be somewhat of the theory of operation of how it works. So, um, anyways, according to the service manual and that uh, bulletin that we were just reading on there. So, um, hopefully this will uh, help you out some. But, yeah, hopefully this will help you out some. Um that particular service bulletin we were reading it i actually just found on a google search somehow or another i came across it but you can get it get it through uh all data or even mitchell mitchell dyi whatever you want to you know look look for that um but just go through the steps i just talked about and that's the proper way to really service that uh um transfer case and and in our case it worked. It did what we wanted to do. So anyways, thanks for watching.